Here, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at it again with another Giants video. And today, we gotta talk about where in the world are the Giants going to go at pick 11 after the free agency moves that they've made within the past week. Now, of course, as you all know, we signed the number one wide receiver, Kenny Galladay, big body, big target, acrobatic catcher, contested catch, master that Kenny Galladay is, and a deep threat. I don't know why people don't think he's a deep threat. I mean, that, that, that's why the dude is so great on the outside. We signed him, and that alone opened doors for us in the draft. It also, you know, kind of made a lot of people, including myself, think that we were going to go corner for that cornerback number two spot. But then, just a couple days later, we signed Adoree Jackson, former cornerback of the Tennessee Titans and somebody with tons of potential, enough potential to be a number one. But even without that, I think he was going to be a stellar number two corner for us. And that put us into a really strange spot because in my opinion, the NYPD is back. I now think that we have a, a top five secondary in the league. And that, that that's adding a top five secondary in the league to a number nine defense in the league last year. So you can you just imagine how much better we just got? And of course, you know, we added a little bit of depth pieces. That middle linebacker two spot, in my opinion, it's fine for this year. I am fine with rolling with, Reg with Reggie Raglan at middle linebacker two or a rotation to him and Crowder. And it's just like you realize the Giants filled in so many holes. Where are they going at pick six? Well, I'm going to start off with what I think is probably the most likely, and that is offensive line. And as you see up there, I got the picture of Rashawn Slater because he's been the most popular guy to mock to the Giants when it comes to offensive line at 11. Here's the thing. We still need to fill in that offensive guard spot. And to some people, we still need to fill in the right tackle spot. Not everybody is sold on Matt Peart. Not everybody believes that he could be the right tackle of the future. Now, I personally do. I think you just need to give him a little bit of time and he'll be a solid right tackle. Maybe even better than the solid right tackle of your franchise. But... The guy here in Rashawn Slater is somebody that could come in and play right tackle or you could slide him in, you know, a la the Zach Martin and have him play right guard. It's not completely out of the question. And I will say the first time I've ever heard uh, Rashawn Slater seriously mock to us um, to the Giants at 11 was by Steffi Small. So shout out to her on the Young Guns podcast. But this guy right here is one of the best linemen in the draft period. He's right behind Panay Sewell for that best tackle spot. And he will be, in my opinion, a pro bowl tackle. And if you put him in at guard, maybe even an all pro guard. Very similar to Sewell himself. And a lot of people want him there at 11. Here's the thing, though. Will he be there at 11? We're not sure if this man is going to survive all the way to the Giants because there's a good chance that Sewell goes within the top five. And if Sewell goes within the top five, that means at five, I fully expect the Bengals to take Slater because they want to, you know, they want to keep their quarterback healthy and non-injured and they want to keep him rolling. So then if Slater isn't there, the next guy up, in my opinion, would be AVT, Elijah Vera Tucker, just because of his versatility on the line. He's another person that can play outside and inside with the positions. But at that point, AVT might be considered a reach. You know, he's somebody that's supposed to go within the 20s, not necessarily at 11. That might be a bit too high for him. So that being said, let's go into the next position that is still, you know, very much likely, and that's wide receiver. You see, I got Jalen Waddle up there in the Giants uniform. There's, there's now even better of a chance, in my opinion, that Waddle or Smith drops to the Giants because the Giants weren't the only teams that filled in their positions of need. A couple teams ahead of us did that as well. I really don't think the Dolphins are going to go receiver at three. I think there's a strong chance that the Eagles might go tight end with Pitts at three because they're shopping Zach Ertz right now, but there's still a chance they go receiver. And even then, I'm looking at the, you know, the draft board up ahead of us, and I see legitimately just two teams at the max that could take receivers ahead of the Giants, and that would be the Philadelphia Eagles and the Detroit Lions, which means one of these guys is going to drop there, and it's going to be either Waddle or Smith. Both of them would be great additions to the team. Now, some of you might be saying, we already got Galladay. Why in the world are we going to add somebody else? To that question, I say, why not? It's always been receiver at 11 for me in this draft. And to some point, it still is even after adding Kenny Galladay. Because one thing you got to take in mind is 
there's no such thing as too much of a good thing when it comes to football. There's no such thing as too good, too many good offensive linemen. No such thing as too many good um, defensive linemen. There's no such thing as too many good weapons. Because another thing you have to take into account here is that we did sign Kenny Galladay. And Galladay has shown that sometimes he will be off the field. Availability is the best ability. You got to plan for that. Why not plan for that by supplementing him with basically another number one wide receiver? You know what I mean? And also, I don't think just Kenny Galladay fixes this wide receiving core. This wide receiving core couldn't get separation to save their life last year. I need somebody else that I know can get separation. Either Smith or Waddle is there. I'm taking one of them because they're proven, at least at the college football level. And once again, before we signed Galladay, these were the guys we were going to trust with that number one wide receiver spot. These were the guys we were going to trust to get open against NFL defenses. And I don't think I don't think that changes at all. I really don't. And if you could imagine an offense out there of Galladay, Waddle or Galladay, Smith and Shepard would say Quan in the backfield. Daniel Jones will be having a time of his life. Of course, this doesn't mean we don't address the offensive line. There's the second round. There's a guy named Wyatt Davis. But moving on, uh, this is along with the um with the whole weapon thing. I think tight end. The only reason I'm listing pits separately from weapons and in tight ends is because there's a chance we might trade Evan Ingram. And in that chance, if we trade Evan Ingram, guys, which you know, of course, I want, but I do think he could be successful this year because he won't be the number one target. We're not going to get into that. But if if we do trade Evan Ingram uh, and Kyle Pitts is on the board. I think Pitts is on the pick. Once again, though, he might go top 10. If he survives to 11, he's completely on board. Grab that boy up. You're going to have a great, great tight end room of Kyle Pitts and Kyle Rudolph. Hey, the two Kyles, and you're going to have a monster, monster Mitch ma Mitch mess. mismatch there for opposing defenses, all right? Next up, though, the next position we could possibly go is edge, and I got my guy Aziz Ojolari up on the screen right now who is my personal favorite edge rusher in this class. And the thing about edge, and I've said it consistently and I still do believe it, I don't think there's an edge rusher in this class that is worth the 11th overall pick. I think any edge rusher that you take is gonna be a reach. Now I'm not considering Quiddy Pay an edge rusher, just purely because of his size and his and you know the way he was at college i don't think he's playing outside linebacker for the giants he's gonna be playing on the d line and right now our d line is actually stacked i don't see where he fits in i think it would be a little bit of a redundant pick to be honest with you guys so i'm looking at guys that could play that outside linebacker spot that could actually be an edge in our system aziz is the best pick there you know other guys include like you know jalen phillips and whatnot that i think could possibly play on the outside but the thing is no matter which edge you go at 11 they're gonna be a little bit of a reach in my opinion there's no legitimate number one edge rusher in this class in the sense that there's no bosa brother there's no chase young there's no you know chubb there's no none of those guys here uh, which means they're not worth the pick however when you're in a position when where the giants are in where they've literally filled in every other hole you could kind of afford to take that reach in my opinion i think that ojalari would be the best fit i think that having him coming into our linebacker coaching room of kevin Schur and jeremy pruitt now he didn't i don't think ojalari ever worked with sure i might have to double check that who was once the you know outside linebacker coach at georgia i don't think he ever did if he did it was probably just his rookie year but sure knows the kind of scheme that georgia ran so he knows how to work with guys like ojalari it's one of the reasons last year i made a video that said lorenzo carter would break out and we all saw before carter went down he looked better than ever it's because because Sher knows how to work these guys. And now you got Pruitt, who's worked with Sher for years. Guys, coaching does a lot of great things. And I think that's going to do a lot of great things if Ojolari comes to our system. And he's going to be paired up with another Georgia Bulldog across from him in Lorenzo Carter. And I think that's going to be a monster setup, especially with Leonard Williams coming through the inside, wreaking havoc. And then for the last possible, you know, position that I think the Giants could go at 11th. And the reason I have it as the last possible position is because much like the edge there's no player worth taking at 11 that is middle linebacker and i have michael parsons up there and before you know there's a couple of michael parsons stands i know that will always get on me the only reason i'm saying he's not gonna be taking that 11 guys is because of the allegations we got to take these things seriously we have a coach in joe judge who just went through a whole three-day process to make sure that kenny Galloway would be a culture fit and would be a good locker room fit i really don't think michael parsons is a realistic thing at 11 even if listen to me here 
even if the man is innocent, I still don't think the Giants are taking him. Is the allegations alone that's going to turn them off, guys. And Micah Parsons, by the way, is a great player in this draft. He's a top 10 talent. I don't even necessarily think he's going to be a fit at middle linebacker. I'll be honest with you. I think the guy is probably a better edge. <laughs> it, it, that's funny enough. But he can play middle linebacker. I mean, he's going to be next to Blake, so it's not like he'll have to be the Mike. But I, he's just not coming here, guys. He's not coming here. Look at the DeAndre Baker situation. DeAndre Baker was innocent. The Giants let go of him before they even found out he was innocent. Even if this man is innocent, I don't think Judge wants you know him in the locker room just because of the distraction. You could agree with it. You could disagree with it um, about that outlook. But I could guarantee you Parsons ain't going to be a Giant, at least not at 11. And I doubt he drops all the way to 42. So you could kind of just book it that he's not going to be a Giant. But other than Parsons, there's not any other middle linebacker that I see the Giants taking at 11. This is a position that could be fulfilled in the second, third or even fourth round and once again i don't be surprised if the giants roll with ragland and crowder but that's it for today guys let me know what you think is there a position i missed that the giants could possibly go at pick 11 and we're in a nice spot right now where we have options put your thoughts down below like share subscribe i'm out thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and share i'll catch y'all in the next one